The Book of Recollections, Episode 23, The Dinner Party, by Dysylvania. The Book of Recollections, Episode 23, The Dinner Party, by Dysylvania. Well, 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 you'd think the drama would be too much by now. Here you are, back, craving for some more. Rest assured, it is my duty as the Book of Recollections to provide. And provide I shall. The scene is set within the Midnight Chapel, with a barely dressed Kaith kneeling down in front of a clear pool of water. She looked exhausted, lost, purposeless, asking none other than Lunai to help guide her path. The pool water started lightly trembling as an image started to form and Kaith recognized Genevieve holding Leo's unconscious and seizing body next to a body of water. All the while, another figure bearing an uncanny resemblance to Jen, but looking far more feral with her wild red silvery hair in the wind, was towering over them with an almost famished look on her face. And in the distance, two other figures were slowly approaching the scene. Overtaken by a sense of dread, Kaith frustratingly called for Lunai to help her find this place and help Jen and Leo. For a brief moment, a vision of the moon astral appeared, begging Kaith to protect the three children blessed by her, but before the half-elf had any chance to protest, Lunai pushed her into the pool of water, which transported her directly in the middle of the scene she previously witnessed. The moment Kaith emerged, drenched in water and gasping for air, the bard, who revealed himself as Lysander Lyricus, started playing what seemed like a profession of love, not quite knowing which of the three women he was supposed to look at. He had been previously instructed by Mr. Fang, Jen's grandfather, to sing the most beautiful song to his endeared one on his behalf, without actually giving any details on her appearance whatsoever. But that did not deter the tan-skinned human with his silky hair tightly caught in a bun, putting on a devilishly charming half-smile while delighting with his suave compositions. At the same time, Jen was desperately trying to bring Leo back to consciousness while under constant pressure from her grandmother, Eleanor, to hand over the gift she was supposed to retrieve. Jen pushed back while gently submerging Leo's body into the water. The Chancellor stopped seizing and slowly started to come to when he locked eyes with an incredibly puzzled Kaith. Feeling the constant push from Eleanor, Jen summoned a pocket dimension high up in the air, using a sturdy rope to climb up while dragging Leo's barely conscious body. Kate tried to follow, but her drenched self made it impossible to ascend, constantly slipping and falling into the water. Lysander offered his assistance to the half-elf, not without proclamations of his admiration and constant compliments towards her. Naturally, Kate's wit and banter came into play, but it did nothing to deter the bard, enticing him even more so. While Kate explained the situation to Lysander in the pocket dimension, Jen was expressing her concerns to Leo about her grandmother's heart, fearing it might make Eleanor too powerful. Leo's eyes turned purple in his attempt to discover the secrets of the heart and found that it possessed an ancient cold power somehow related to Obscura, and it was bound to Eleanor. Although Leo advised caution and a strong will, Jen decided to merge with the heart herself, while asking her dear friend to keep her in check and bring her to her senses should she go off the rails. Outside, the tension was palpable both between Kaith and Lysander, and between the two of them and Jen's grandparents, who did nothing but stare with eerie smiles on their faces. Leo's head appeared from the pocket, summoning Kaith and Lysander to join them. Kaith begrudgingly hops on the bard's back, who ascends almost effortlessly. 
Inside, Leo requested assistance to perform open-heart surgery on Jen, trying to replace her own heart with the one of her grandmother. For a while, things seemed to go according to plan, Leo succeeding in carefully replacing each artery he cut into almost instantly. But as he tried to sew the last piece, Jen stopped breathing. The new heart ceased pumping and an artery snapped, forcing Leo to swiftly reattach her original heart to bring her back to life. After the failed attempts to merge with the heart, even with Jen receiving Obscuro's help in the form of a vision, the party decided to go to talk to Eleanor and Mr. Fang who were patiently waiting for them outside. The grandparents convinced them to join their coven party within the Blood Moon Castle and Eleanor extended her hand above the pool of water. When a moonbeam descended on her palm, a vortex was created in the water and a descending spiral staircase was revealed. As they went down the stairs, Eleanor was holding her palm upwards as if controlling the water that was, at the moment, pushed above to form a dome. Going past a stone gate adorned with the phases of the moon, the party walked down a rather claustrophobic corridor despite its high ceiling. Once they reached the banquet hall, they were greeted by a warm luminous candle lit room exquisitely decorated with a long ebony table in the center. There were six figures sitting at the table, two were elves who were simply mesmerized by the great hall paying no mind to the other guests. There was an elegant woman with short black hair and icy blue eyes who introduced herself as the charming Lady Seraphine Velour. She sat next to Baron Victor Hollow, an imposing figure, drawing the attention to him not only through his tales of bravery, but also through the iron mask concealing his face. In front of them, with a jolly booming voice, was Count Maverick Throne, a gold-eyed individual with scars plastered across his pale face, who was accompanied by the mysterious but beautiful Countess Isolde the Thrones, whose soft musical voice that pierced through her veil was just as enticing as her glowing crimson eyes. After making acquaintance, Jen politely requested her grandmother to offer clean clothes for her and her two companions, while Lysander was offered more gold to entertain the guests. Jen, Kate and Leo found their way into her grandmother's quarters and opened the doors of the large armoire placed next to the king-sized bed. The dresses were elegant, but partially eaten by moths, who seemed to be at home in that dresser. Suddenly, Jen hears some strange noises coming from the back of the armoire. She spots a humanoid-looking moth staring at them and slowly approaching them. At that point, Jen quickly grabs whatever was closest and shuts the door of the closet. The girls put on the dresses while Leo was stuck with a feminine pants suit. He looked in a mirror to arrange himself but noticed two shimmering eyes and a mouth that immediately started spewing insults and mean comments at them. Naturally, Kate joined in to counter the mirror, who, at times, seemed almost at a loss for words. Jen approached a different strategy when hearing that the mirror was adoring Eleanor. Jen tried to extract whatever secrets she could out of the mirror, but was abruptly interrupted by Eleanor, who escorted them back to the ballroom, not without pressing Jen to give her the heart. Back to the party hall, the room was filled with Lysander's chants, Lady Seraphine's riddles and Count Maverick's tales of bravery. It was Lysander's turn to freshen up, so he went in search of a bathroom. While disrobing and taking a well-earned bath, he notices a dark blob in one of the baskets which, after poking it with his sword, turned out to be a black cat that would occasionally shout, I am darkness, with plenty of enthusiasm. The cat seemed hungry, so Lysander fed it a few of his rations. The cat proceeded to jump into his backpack, eating all of his clothes and a few other items until it was full. 
Kaith went looking for Lysander because the feast wouldn't start without all of the guests seated, and was treated by a barebacked Lysander wearing nothing but his armor and arguing with his backpack. While averting her gaze, Kaith repaid the favor and handed Lysander her cloak to cover himself and tried to head back into the great hall. But when opening the same door, they were somehow transported back into the bathroom. After a few tries, they somehow managed to find their way back into the ballroom and join the rest of the group at the table. Their deepest fears came through, realizing they were in fact the main course, as Lady Seraphine plunged towards one of the elves, slitting his throat and sucking him dry. The adventurers scattered, except for Jen, who stayed to take on Count Maverick. Leo bolted towards a corridor, but was suspiciously transported back into the ballroom. In that moment, a large shadow enveloped him, concealing his whereabouts. Lysander was attacked by both the Baron and Isolde, but, as luck would have it, he seemed to elude both of them. Eleanor was trying to negotiate with Jen to give up her friends or make them part of their covenant, which infuriated the Dampier even more. Meanwhile, Kate swiftly moved towards the corridor, finding the darkest spot to shadow herself, in the attempts of taking any enemy that would approach by surprise. However, after no longer hearing any commotion, she decided to leave her hiding spot to discover that she was in a completely different hallway with no one in sight. She cautiously proceeded to open one of the doors that led her to what looked like a trophy room. In the center there was a familiar pool, only this time there was no water in it. Suddenly, Kate had the strangest feeling she was being watched, and when she heard some strange noises coming from an open cabinet behind, she turned around daggers in hand, ready to attack, only to see a crouched, disheveled version of herself, holding both her knees and rocking frantically back and forth. This was the recap for episode 23 of Vim, as told by the Book of Recollections. I am Count Bear, your Vim recap narrator. If you'd like to join us as Vim The Tale of Immortality premieres, tune in on Sunday at 5 p.m. UTC on youtube.com slash at Dicelvania. New recaps drop every Friday evening. And remember, every subscribe keeps the magic alive. Thanks for sticking with us. Good day, good night, and don't let the vampires bite.